Guns for General Washington. Chapter 13. Good News for the British. While Henry Knox's cannon convoy was stalled at the Mohawk River, Major General William Howe, back in Boston, was busy making plans. In his cabin aboard HMS Somerset, Sir William read a secret dispatch from London. He read it through, then read it again. Locking it in a desk drawer, he leaned back and smiled. After so many disappointments, it was nice to have good news. Muffled against the cold, the British commander stepped on deck and looked around the harbor. Like faithful watchdogs, his ships were all in place, standing guard over the helpless city. Howe began to pace alongside the ornate railing, reviewing in his mind the events that had recently taken place. Two weeks ago in mid-December, transports had sailed in from England bringing a regiment of Marines. Then other ships had arrived from the Bay of Fundy in Canada, carrying hay and grain for the horses. But the real supply convoy, the one he'd been counting on, had met with disaster. Twenty-six ships had left Plymouth, England, bound for Boston Harbor. They carried thousands of redcoats as well as cannons, powder, food, and muskets, everything the general was waiting for. Then in mid-ocean, the convoy sailed into a hurricane. The ships were scattered and blown off course. They wound up far to the south in the British West Indies. During the storm, many soldiers were lost and ships were damaged. Some had escaped without too much harm, but it would take a long time for these ships to be refitted, then to beat their way north in the middle of winter. Adding to Howe's problems, he had to deal with the cursed little ships called privateers. These weren't part of an official navy, but the Rebel Congress allowed them to capture any British vessels that came their way. To the colonists, the raiders were heroes, but to General Howe, the armed privateers were plain pirates, lawless ships that stole out of port and attacked his merchantmen, then took cover in the many bays and inlets of New England. The privateers not only captured Howe's cargoes, but they escaped to shallow waters where his warships couldn't follow. All in all, 1775 had been a black year for Sir William, a year filled with trouble. But the secret dispatch that had just arrived gave him hope. According to this message, a new supply fleet was being assembled, even larger than the last. After the start of the new year, this convoy would cross the Atlantic with the reinforcements he needed. In a neat flowery hand, the Secretary of the Admiralty had promised Howe 40,000 troops, plus enough weapons to carry out all his plans for 1776 and up to May of 1777. The General returned to his cabin to study his maps. He would rely on the Admiralty. If the weather behaved, the transports and supply ships would arrive soon. Then, with a powerful new force, he would strike. He was tired of the stalemate, tired of the inactivity, tired of the fool rebels with their prattle about freedom and liberty. Sir William Howe could hardly wait to crush Washington and the colonial army once and for all. And we'll read chapter 14 next time. Till then, as Tigger says, ta-ta for now. Thanks so much for listening. Love you guys. Bye-bye.